Well, joining me in studio to unpack further on this matter as the spokesperson of Black First Land First, Mr. Lindsay Marstorp. Also joining me in studio is political analyst Mr. Tepo Khadima and also Mr. Mzwane Lemanyi from the PPF, who is the president of PPF also. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us right here in studio. Also, a man who will be also joining us live from Skype is Mr. William Bird, the director of Media Monitoring Africa also. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us in studio this evening. Now we've put out some of the examples of the lopsided media coverage from the different media publications on two different stories, which is now the coverage of the bank's collusion and also the the matter of, of, of Mr. Brian Miller for being sworn in as an MP. Now what is your take on this skewed coverage? I'll start with you, Mr. Mr. Tsebo Khadima. Yeah, what, what we are seeing is, by the way, is not uh, a mistake, it's by design. And it's by design on twofold. We must not forget that uh, in South Africa, the media exists uh, solely on basis of support of uh, advertising from the moneyed corporations as well as uh, from the state. And when it comes to the state, we must not forget that our national treasury have appropriated all procurement power unto themselves. Mm. And it is through that centralized procurement that uh, there is no media in this country that you'll find daring to go and highlight or expose any malfides on either the part of the moneyed corporations who are advertisers or national treasurer who also advertises on behalf of the state in its entirety. So that is the one fold. The other one that we must also take into account is that in South Africa over the last uh, 15 or so years, we have seen a continued trend of juniorization of the media rooms. So it should not be surprising that uh, the various uh, uh, journalists that attempted to write on this story in the week most of them are not subject matter experts on this very uh, complex uh, world of uh, capital markets and uh, the banking systems of the world, fiscal mm. and monetary policies of uh, various uh, governments. So therefore it should not surprise us that they have not been able to really ask the right questions mm. to be able to keep this nation enlightened. Mm. And by and large it would appear to me that the media in South Africa at least have moved away from that which John F. Kennedy in 1963 called on to be the role of the press, that their role is not to just entertain and to amuse, but is to really be able to highlight to the nation the dangers and the opportunities that we are facing and also what opportunities that we should be able mm. to take uh, advantage of. And by and large in South Africa today, the media is failing. I must uh, add, though I will be seen to be biased, and I'm happy to admit mm. guilt in that regard, that what ANN7 is doing, what the New Age newspaper are doing, it's something that is really so much more needed. We've also seen uh, the emerging other uh, alternative media platforms, such as Uncensored Opinion, Black Opinion, uh, this really, I think, by and large, are now filling in that gap or that void that mm -hmm. has been left by the mainstream media. And it's only a matter of time, mm -hmm. I think, that the mainstream media cannot continue to hold mm -hmm. course on really overlooking or superficially addressing very serious issues that mm. uh, we need to be taking into account. But and it just, shouldn't surprise yeah. us. And just your I, take, Mr. Manuel, yeah, on that I, and the effects of actually not reporting truthfully uh, matters that concern South Africa and especially that of the economy. Yeah, by the way, I think, uh, I don't even think it's an issue, <coughs> it's an issue of ignorance from journalists, uh, as Sepo is putting mm. it here. I think it's a deliberate thing to, to continue a particular narrative, mm -hmm. a narrative that characterizes corruption as being only in the ANC and the government domain. And when corruption happens in the private sector, then this is what happens. You then also find all kinds of fancy wording uh, that is being used, like collusion. When in fact, even in the Competitions Act, even if there is this word collusion, but mm -hmm. it's part of corruption. Now, had, there, had it been largely black people uh, that were involved in this, there would be a huge corruption and there would be a huge a corruption mm. headline. There would be a huge, even, there would be huge uh, even uh, thinking to say, 
uh, the sentences that these people are likely to get is jail sentences mm. and all this. Mm. None of this is happening. If it was black people that were involved here, what you would have seen is faces of these people. Mm. Uh, right now, people are not even shown the face of Maria Ramos mm. as heading up corruption, Stephen Kosev as heading up corruption, and the various standard bank CEOs as it were, mm. simply because mm. uh, it does not uh, suit the narrative. So indeed, in fact, this is also a violation of the press code. In terms of the press code, media is supposed to report in a fair, balanced mm. uh, a manner uh, and make sure that all the facts are, are put on the table. Are they clear? They're not doing and that. So indeed, for I think for us as Progressive Professionals Forum, we're hugely disappointed uh, in this uh, media coverage. Uh, we think that uh, media is robbing South Africa mm. of a very important fact to know that uh, there's corruption in the private sector and banks in particular who have argued mm. as PPF that they do not have moral authority to be principals on FICA. They have just shown how corrupt they are. And we are saying to South Africa, are these the people that you want to, you, to hang your lives on in terms of this uh, fake bill? Mm. I think banks have just shown their true colors that indeed they are thieves, uh, they are thugs. Mm. And, uh, and, 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 and we hope that mm. the tribunal is going to find uh, and, and give them a very strong sanction. And we call upon government, mm. actually, not to strike deals with media like government has struck deals with the construction cartel. We're saying that uh, we will be very disappointed if government is going to strike another cartel-type deal, with, with type deal that they've done. Now, with without, the, without interrupting you, I just want to get um, the BLS reaction to what Mr. Manye has just mentioned, that if it was really black people who were part of this entire scandal, that we would have been by now seeing their faces on newspapers, seeing their faces on the headlines. Including their houses. And their houses and their families yeah. also involved. Now, what do you make of this? Do you think that this is intentionally because of, of another race issue also? I think, I mean, to date, is that today's story should have been about maybe about Jabulani flats where uh, black people have been evicted. Um, one was shot twice in the leg for asking or wanting to be returned to their home, comrade there. Should be about Mambalodi and uh, BLF's position of bringing the Nigerian and the community from South Africa together in wanting to foster peace amongst blacks. But we know that white media historically is created to dumb down or to mm. pacify the masses. Now we're in a, a space where black people are fighting and beginning to understand the struggle that we are fighting against mm. white monopoly capital, people like your Rupert and so forth. So Rupert TV or Rupert Media then goes on the offensive and, and needs to now talk about Brian Molefe. Why? Mm. Because Brian Molefe has shown himself to be a black first uh, in terms of thinking and mm. in his, the way he's turned Eskom around and the way he's defended against white monopoly capital and the energy sector. So. Yes, I agree. It's a deliberate attempt. Uh, we are in a war for black liberation. Mm. And, and white <clears throat> media, white, uh, white monopoly capital via Rupert is, is, is clutching now and, and, and running riots and trying to mo mobilize all sectors of society, including all these agents and including mm. Rupert Media to be able to fight and create a narrative that somehow Brian Molefe is the most important story when we okay. know very well that okay. the most important story all is right. Prime Gordon's protection of white monopoly capital. Well, let me just quickly pose a question to our Skype guest, Mr. William Bird, who is also joining us. Mr. Bird, welcome to A97. Just to ask you a quick question. Well, do you think that there seems to be a problem in the country with how the media publications report on certain stories, raising suspicious of undue influence from certain people? Well, look, I think that uh, media around the world take different perspectives on different stories. What you want to make sure you do is, is that as an audience member, if you consume a diversity of media, you should get access to a range of different views, ideas, and perspectives. Uh, we know that to a degree this, uh, this certainly isn't the case. Too often our media uh, across the board tend to access too many people uh, in senior or authoritative positions and they don't access enough, enough diversity of sources. Uh, in the current context, uh, I wasn't able to hear your guest fully, unfortunately, because it sounds like he was making some really important points, but my advice would be if they've got concerns with uh, the way media are reporting, they must take, they must lodge complaint to the press council. You know, it's you're never going to change anything if you just uh, accuse media, because then you run the big risk of sounding just like Donald Trump. You know, and and that's not a place that I think we want to uh, fall into, where you set up this kind of oppositional idea where it's uh, for or against the media. 
Oh, well, thank you so much for that, Mr. Bird. We will come to you again just now. And just to pose another question to you, Mr. Tsepo uh, you know, stuff like black liberation is, is now starting to, 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 to come up. Is there a larger political play at hand over here, um, according to you, um, for this kind of narrative being built by the media? Yeah, I, I think, you know, by and large, what we are seeing in the mainstream media is the attempt to uh, suppress uh, any uh, you know, issue that uh, will bring to the consciousness mm. of the masses in terms of what they uh, really should be looking at and, and, and be aware of. So on the one hand, that's what we are seeing. And I think just in respond to what Mr. Manu is saying, I, I agree that indeed the, what we are seeing, it is a deliberate uh, attempt or a deliberate concerted effort mm. to ensure that uh, the issues, the real issues that we need to be worried about are not at So we address issues superficially, but primarily on those uh, two things I've raised. But let's look at this issue of the 17 or so banks that have been uh, mm. involved in collusion. Right now, as we sit here today, in April, there's a trial coming up of three people. One of them works for Barclays in New York. He's on a bond of 150,000 US dollars. And his crime, which he's been prosecuted for, in his personal capacity, is for a manipulation of the exchange rate of developing nations, South Africa, Russia, and Brazil. Should it surprise us, taking into account that these are members of the BRICS nations? No. So uh, viewers can go and look at that. We've seen various fines that have been uh, levied upon these banking corporations in the United States. So therefore, we had some of the economists last week asserting that, no, this matter needs to be treated carefully and all of that. It is absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. On the following basis, fines in the United States have not mm -hmm. bankrupted any of these moneyed corporations. That's why we are now seeing criminal prosecution coming mm -hmm. in, which is very necessary. Therefore, in South Africa, we should levy the stiffest fines possible. Mm. At the same time, we should be ensuring mm. that there's criminal prosecution of the wrongdoers. The mainstream media would have done their duty, their sacred duty of journalism, if they would highlight these issues, if they, if, when they are interviewing these various economists who are coming up with this hyperbole that we need to be uh, trading carefully here, which is absolute nonsense, they should have been asking them the hard questions. And then asking them to then explain how is it possible that we are expected to act differently when the largest economy being the United States mm. is now acting very sternly against uh, the uh, perpetrators of this heinous crime. Mm. We must not forget that for the period in review which the Competition Commission has referred this case of currency manipulation in excess of 500 billion rand was lost and that is not an accounting entry that is not some fiction mm. it's real money that you and i the ordinary people Look. felt it mm. in our pockets it's money that came out of our pockets in increased prices mm. it's money that came out of some of our state-owned enterprises that since the new administration came in and spearheaded the national development plan which requires of us to be spending on capital infrastructure mm. we've seen corporations such as escom such as transnet as a direct result of this heinous crime by this uh, mm. banking corporations of the manipulation of the currency that they then had an increased um, expense on their capital expenditure on the very necessary economic infrastructure therefore ensuring that this country will perpetually be in a state of uh, poverty inequality and all the things that we so much desperately need to, to get out mm. of so the media has failed us we must accept mm. that the question must be that yes we not only highlight this but we must be calling for agent steps to do it what mr bed is saying i cannot agree with i have got ex real life experience mm. with the press council it is a toothless dog mm. and that's we must know it is funded by the way by mm. the same media corporation so how can they Mr. in Mato, any shape of they are no different yeah. the press council is no different from the media that's re reliant mm. on advertising mm. from the money corporations and the state controlled by national treasury the press council is then funded mm. by the same media uh, uh, corporations the newspapers therefore there can be no justice mm. there can be no expectation howsoever for us mm. that they will act in a manner that is responsible in a manner that can really bring an end to this mm. heinous crime that is going to cause perpetual 
lifelong uh, harm for generations mm. to come. Yeah, in, fact, no. for us, in, in, in South Africa, we'll be calling upon South Africans not to be intimidated by media. Uh, mm. South Africans have always been intimidated. First, it was the issue of international investors, that if you do this, investors are going to be yeah. uh, very scary and all that. Do you think this is that. kind of a breeding ground done by these media companies to some sort of build some sort of defense oh, yes. and to downplay this matter yes. with regards oh, yes. to because influence they are part also of the this. sanctions yes. or the, rather the yes. actions that will be taken against these companies? Exactly. So first it was the international investors. So when that trick waned, then they came back with some of the rating agencies and now that the rating agencies have been exposed to be thugs as well uh, in their own right, now the next, uh, uh, the next scare is the Financial Action Task Force, the FATF, to mm. say if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, accent to the FIC bill, you don't, you, you're going to have a, 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 a down rating mm. of the country, the country is going to be uh, marked negatively. Mm. So I'm saying uh, South Africans must be aware mm. that we've got a very unpatriotic media in this country, a media that is uh, hell-bent mm. on ensuring that uh, South Africa is always positioned in a negative way. Now, Master, and indeed, Master, do, you, do you actually agree in, with what Mr. Let me just Mr. finish this point. Indeed, mm. I, co I concur with uh, Mr. Khadima mm. here that South Africa, with all the insults that uh, ANN7 is getting, with all the insults that the New Age is getting, truth of the matter, if you wanted to know what's happening in South Africa, the best page, paper mm. to read is the New Age. It will tell you province by province what is happening. Mm. If you wanted to know what you are not being told, in terms of the rest of the uh, current affairs, you must listen to NN7. This is where you're going to get a completely different yeah. perspective. But if you want to be fed a, a lot of nonsense, a lot of this uh, white monopoly capital narrative, then you must go to the Rupert TV. Mm. Now, I just want to get a reaction. Well, you can first go ahead your first point, but I also want to get your reaction, Mr. Tsebo Khatima, on the way the media has also reported on the Mr. Brian Malefe's matter of being sworn in into media. Just your reactions as to how these certain publications have written some of their statements with regards to that. But Mr. Mastrop, you can first go ahead. I think, I think we need to understand, and I'll, I'll, the, the two points that we must understand is the defense of white monopoly capital, or the 17 banks, in relation to the crimes that have committed, the defense, ongoing defense of APSI as well, and then the attack on Brian Wolf. Mm. Those two things go together. White media is, mm. is you see, we fall into the step of thinking media is impartial. Mm. No, white media has an agenda. It's there to attack black people who think black first. We know what mm. Brian Mulef has done at ESCOM. We know that he could very mm. well become the new... We actually, we want reason, him... For some reason, this is a we, matter that is being we, downplayed yes, by the media. and we want him to become the next Minister of Finance. And we know that Pravin Gordon must go because he is an agent of Jan Rupert. So mm. white media now plays a very important role by exposing or showing or defending uh, white, uh, white corruption or... Mm. or the, comp the Competition Commission's findings on, on these banks, defending that position, but then attacking Brian Mulefi, so to, to make him not able to be seen as someone who's legitimately able to transform the economy of South Africa in the favor of the black majority. Mm -hmm. You must understand, white media is very deliberate. It's as deliberate as Johan Rupert and Jan van Riebeek and everyone well, is about land theft, theft of economy, so white media, or Rupert media in particular, is about maintaining the oppression of black people and instigating or mm. insinuating that black people are unable to do the job of, of, of that primal left is being put forward. And your, and your take on this, yeah, I mean, we, we, can, we can look at that. I mean, I, I was amazed to see News 24 giving prominence to the letter by China to Dover from Northwest, who somehow goes by the title of uh, former deputy chairperson of the Northwest. There is no such title in the African National Congress. But anyway, he wrote some letter, but they gave it prominence. But without asking questions, there is no member, there is no Northwest member of parliament, Mpumalanga member of parliament. One is a member of parliament. And the processes are there. So why such halabaloo is being made up is beyond me, except to say that there is mischief in such reporting and in giving such a prominence. Now, when we look at Mr. Brian Mulefe, by the way, this is a South African who has proved himself. We must not forget that his first career, he started at National Treasury. And he is actually one of the leading minds in terms of uh, in capital markets and particularly uh, debt capital markets it's something that he understands fully as well as equity capital markets for the time that he was running PIC the larger portfolio of PIC was in equities so you couldn't have asked for a better seasoned person who can mm. really go and play a, a, a prominent role in our current uh, uh, economic and financial system in the nation and in Parliament 
I cannot see any reason why anybody would put a question mark. But this is what is important. The mainstream media has suppressed the testimony that Mr. Brian Mulefe mm. gave in Parliament when he was CEO of uh, ESCOM, when he was being asked about the meeting with the Guptas, where he made... And uh, in Parliament, he made mention that he had met with Jonathan Oppenheimer, and he mm. thought that Jonathan Oppenheimer was a nice guy. He also uh, made mention that Johann Rupert called him to his farm in Stellenbosch and showed him a river mm -hmm. and said, this river here, there is water flowing through it. We can put a machine here and we can generate two megawatts of electricity, mm. which we can feed into the grid. And Mr. Brian Mulefe says that upon that meeting, he referred that matter to one of his colleagues to then action further mm. so that they can report back to him. The media never reported on that. Neither was Mr. Johan Rupert nor Mr. Mulefe questioned on mm. that meeting, even though he said this as a matter of public record in Parliament. But yet there has been insinuations about any phone call that he might have received from a, mm. any one of the, the, the Gupta family members. Again, we're seeing that mischief. We're seeing that evil uh, system at work, which unfortunately is robbing the entire nation of the ability to progress. So media really need to step up and do what is right because their continuation now mm. they will soon have to rest in peace mm. in the graveyard of shame now this actually raises another question with regards to why do these public media not even report on or rather expose the political agendas behind um this entire scandals or rather matters to say now, referring back to the, the recent statement by the Democratic Alliance, also claiming that a cabal of Gupta-linked ANC ministers are waging war with the banks. Now, what do you make of this statement? Is it even reasonable to even bring this up? What did the same minister have done? That um, a cabal of Gupta-linked ANC ministers mm -hmm. are waging war with, the, oh. with these banks. Mm. Yeah, no, look, let, let's start from the beginning very quickly. Firstly, just to show the bias in the media, mm. they have... Uh, uh, said a lot about this individual's letter that uh, Mr. Khadim has, has just referred to. And they've said nothing about mm. the support from the province of Northwest. Province of Northwest is supporting Brian Mulefe's nomination. Mm. And they've, not, they've said nothing about the fact that before that happens, Lutuli House must have signed off uh, mm. as it was. The fact that ANC processes have been followed, nothing is being said about that. All that is being projected is that some dodgy dealings have been happening. So we, we, we see them. Uh, so I want to make that point clear. Secondly, we must make it very clear. For us as Progressive Professionals Forum, we think Brian is a high caliber candidate. Mm. He's the one uh, person with uh, all the credentials that you can think of. Whether I want a BCom degree he's got, whether I want a master's degree he's got, whether I want operational experience he has mm. run huge operations at a CEO level. When you want to look at his track record, it's very colorful. Mm. Now, why would anybody have a problem with such a high quality mm. <coughs> candidate at a prime age as well. Mm. Instead of celebrating this appointment, mm. everybody is doing everything they can to trample it down. It just shows that uh, these are the people that are not interested in the progress of this country. Mm. These are the people who are actually racist. There are black people involved in this, those that have been defeated mm. by apartheid. You've got black people that are so defeated that in fact all they want to see is progress of white people when they see a fellow black uh, 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 accenting, mm. uh, ascending, uh, they have a problem. So we're, we're calling upon everyone to embrace this because firstly it's not going to change, it's going to proceed mm. and if indeed Brian does become uh, a finance minister as uh, everybody is talking about this, for us as a progressive professionals you forum, we would welcome that. In fact, because Brian also has national treasure experience mm. and also he has been around uh, the world in, with running state-owned enterprises. He knows the investor sentiments. He knows the issues that the investors uh, uh, look for. He has raised funding internationally. He understands the bond market, he understands mm. equities, <coughs> and understands everything. So what's the problem? So we, we think that, uh, mm. uh, in fact, if people are saying he's going to be finance minister, let him be. Mr. Mastov, you actually wanted to add something y with regards to the latest statement by the Democratic Alliance and why these media publications are not um, exposing the political agenda behind, behind these motives. Look, I think it's important to note when people are calling others Gupta agents, we must ask a very important question. Can it ever be wrong to fight against those who are corrupt, who have stolen money, 
mm. self-enriched and destroyed the, the lives of black poor people. If it means that I'm a Gupta agent for fighting against those who stole the land, who stole the economy of this country, and rendered black people landless, then, then, then so be it. But I'm going to be a constitutional delinquent if I want land back without using the constitution. And I'm going to be a Gupta agent if it means a Gupta agent is someone who fights banks who steal the money from the black majority. Mm. So the notions of, of the DA coming out and saying that ANC leaders are Gupta agents, I think it's, it, it, it more shows the fact that they really don't care about the black majority. They mm. care nothing for the fact that bankers collaborated to steal from the black majority and are the very reason that black people remain landless in our own land. Mm. In fact, I think that sentiment is a sentiment that undermines the constitution. In this country, uh, we need to understand that we've got rule of law, we've got the constitution, we've got the presumption mm. of innocence until proven guilt in the constitution. Mm. The Guptas that are so much hated have never been found guilty by any court of law in the world, not just in South Africa, in the mm. world. No court of law has found them guilty, number one. Number two, even Tulima Donsela was given stacks of money to go and deal with uh, uh, this whole allegation about the Guptas, as it were. As we sit here today, even Tulima Donsela did not come with any adverse findings against the Guptas. She came up with all kinds of observations and this, some hairy fairy stuff that uh, in some, in some total is actually just a, a summary of the various news, uh, news, news clips, uh, but nothing substantive mm. as it were. So to then say people that have not been found guilty by any authoritative process that you want to, but you want to taint mm. them, yet those that are being found guilty, like the cartels, mm. <coughs> construction cartels, found guilty by a thorough process, but they are still treated, treated mm. as angels. We've got banks now that uh, are going to find it very difficult to argue in the, in the tribunal, but even now, uh, media are still painting them mm. as the darlings of this world, as the angels, when in fact we should paint them for the thugs they are. Now yeah. going back to some of these articles um, by these different public media um, reports, um, well, they've actually also some kind of what portrayed that punishing these banks may be very hurtful towards the economy, stating that this might destroy <laughs> the economy and might even hurt investor confidence. But it, which is quite intriguing and might be intriguing for you also because the longer this stays behind closed doors, but the more hurt it will have on the South African economy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Punishing these banks and ensuring that uh, the CEOs of these banks are held to account in mm. criminal, uh, for their criminal conduct mm. is absolutely essential to save this economy. If we treat this matter, we mollycoddle these banks, we treat it with kid gloves, mm. we will have no economy, be assured about that. This time they have to be punished so that an example is made of them so that they do not continue. Mm. Now it's essential to note that in 2015, January, I highlighted to those that uh, would have cared in position of authority, including the Reserve Bank and National Treasury, that there were certain dealings that were happening whereby the rent value was going to be undermined and it was going to decrease in April and in September. Like clockwork, everything else that I had said mm. in that memo came to pass that by September, Beginning of October, we already almost 14 rand to the dollar. Mm. As I had predicted, the very same National Treasury and Reserve Bank did nothing. The other question we need to be asking, and which the me mainstream media has not been asking, hard questions. What happened to the surveillance measures and mechanisms within Res South African Reserve Bank that this corrupt conduct of manipulation of our currency mm. could have been allowed to continue for so many years mm. and having such an adverse effect on our economy without anyone, without a single soul within a South African Reserve Bank being able to pick it up. I must really highlight my shock and horror that mm. we have a South African Reserve Bank that is selective in who it will go and uh, ensure that there is surveillance on their dealings, but certain uh, institutions are uh, holy cows, so mm. to speak. That must come to an end. National Treasury must account. It is shocking, it is appalling the, what they have said to date, whereby instead of really, they should have known better than anybody else, mm. the impact on the economy that by these banks have caused this criminal conduct. Therefore, they must be punished, and they must be punished now, as they are already been punished in mm. other jurisdictions, such as the United States. Mm. Because if we do not stop it, we will have no economy, and I'm very serious about that. Now, mm. I've said this before, that 
for those of us who come from within the banking institution, Mr. Mayin comes from there. He will know this very well. My observation is that the banks in South Africa are thoroughly corrupt. And any insider who mm. dares speak against that corruption is considered a Judas. Mm. And it is a sad day indeed that in this country now, we are riding fast in a imperialistic monopoly capital bus that doesn't have brakes. Mm. And the chief driver of that bus, which is going towards an economic cliff, is unfortunately our Minister of Finance, mm. Mr. Pravin Godan. That has to be stopped for the sake of this country to continue mm. to be a country in a few years to come. Well, political and economist Mr. Melanie Mkabela also joins us on the phone line. Mr. Mkabela, welcome to African News Network. Well, just to get your first reaction with regards to the skewed narrative portrayed by these different media publications, what well, the two stories that we've actually tried to bring about on the surface, what's your take on this? I think uh, one, uh, like one key aspect is, uh, uh, you know, like the consolidation of all is to say I have been getting, uh, you know, y unity from whether political economy, political economists, economists, financial strategists, and other analysts in, a, in this broad, in this broad like matter, uh, and my. Like my take on it is a disappointment that comes from uh, the whole national treasury uh, in dealing with like with the matter with the aid that seem not to be uh, respecting the country to uh, like our expectation and that at the same time it is one issue that you will understand whether uh, the minister of finance has respect to the ANC that deployed him to be minister of finance or. He feels he, uh, you know, he, it's an appointment that has just been created for, uh, like, uh, like for him. And I, I, I believe that uh, 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 gives a huge disappointment. Probably he might not understand the impact that the currency fixing ha might have caused to the entire economy. But this continued to be a fact that that national trade is not interested in transforming mm -hmm. our economy, headed by Pravin Godan, and it must come to an end. Actually, we need accountability and responsibility on this, and ANC need to take a step that will be radically enough and will protect our economy. Mm. That is the first aspect uh, from, like, from my side. The second aspect is, uh, manage from management point of view, uh, whether it will be uh, FIC, it will be Reserve Bank, it will be... Uh, the divisions within national treasury that are responsible for uh, financial management oversight that they have been as well uh, monitored these aspects from 2007. Really, uh, we will need probably to uh, come up with restructuring around there because you will need patriotic candidates to represent government. Mm. And if that does not happen, we, we don't have any economy that we will be proud of. For, for all these times, it has been mentioned that the economy is not well run, but there are agents uh, uh, that are, uh, you know, uh, trying by all means to make sure that the economy collapses. But in the collapse of the economy, there are poor people. Poor people can't afford, you know, even if they have social grants, still they can't afford. And when you steal from poor people, what is that? And the voice from National Treasury is not even inspiring. Mm because they don't even understand uh, the outcome that uh, the Competition Commission has come, uh, like come up with, of which that is disappointing and undermining the other, uh, the economic development, which is uh, 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 the division that was a Competition Commission. Mm. Well, uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Mr. Mkabela. Now, going back to my studio guest, before, should we allow before, this? Before, before your next point, I think alongside media, mm. we need to call to question the role of these uh, NGOs mm. that have been posturing as being concerned mm. about governance, concerned about South Africa. Where is Sipopijana and his safe South Africa? Why yes. is he not saving South really Africa from these banks? This. Where is Corrupt Watch? Uh, they are always uh, on everybody's case about corruption. Here are the banks caught up in corruption. Where is their pronouncement? Mm. Where is the pronouncement of freedom under law? Where is the pronouncement of uh, Helen Sussman Foundation? Yeah. I think this case mm. should just show that uh, when is these foundations have listed and Sipo Pichana included, 
and media, they are all working in tandem to make sure mm. that the transformation agenda of this country is frustrated. Mm. So this case just exposes them bare. Do you agree with that, with Mr. Mr. Mastop, with regards to these NGOs are actually encouraging the breeding ground of of allowing this skewed narrative to continue? Yes, definitely. I mean, Pichana is directly linked to Oppenheimer and the protection of that section of the colonial agenda. But I think also, like one of the things that we must we must juxtapose here is like the argument about land return is that if land is returned to the black, the, the, the land that was stolen is returned to the black majority, there'd be some kind of collapse. Mm. It's the same kind of logic we're using with, with banks being held accountable in relation to corruption. It then means to say that when white people need to account for their crimes, that somehow that is not the fundamental position that must be taken, but rather that white people must be protected because black people cannot find solutions to our problems. And then this is the logic that Petiana works with as well. You must protect, even Pravin Gordon, you must protect white interests, even Trevor Men, you must protect white interests, you must yeah. protect uh, white monopoly capital, you must protect white media, you must protect white interest in this totality because black people have no ability to create a new society. We're mm. saying we reject that notion. Black pe as black people, we can create a new society. Black media houses are exemplification of how we can create a new society. We don't need these media houses, these white media houses that perpetuate mm. the notions that black people are unable. There are many black media houses that are showing the truth about the society. Mm. But then also there are black banks that need to be allowed to, to function in the society. And mm. this is a ruling that must be made through Treasury. Also, we can't allow for 10 percent fine on, on, on these mm. banks. We need to push for 100% of the annual turnover there and then also for, for serious jail time for and these perhaps criminal, criminal, criminal. Yeah, criminal charges against those who are implicated. So we must understand that fundamentally we need to create a new society, one that, re, one that ensures that the black majority can see justice outside of whiteness, mm. that doesn't determine justice by protecting white capital, mm. protecting white land thieves, but says black people's land was stolen. White banks have stolen our, our money. They've ensured that black people today were shot because they want their land mm. back, because they want spaces to live, because they, want, they cannot be evicted through these white banks. Mm. And therefore, when we, when we make that pronouncement, then we'll have black people like Mr. Brian Mulefe, who is black first, who can be the Minister of Finance, and can pronounce strongly on interests like uh, SARB and those who are implicated mm. like these seven white reports. banks. Do you agree Look. that really the silence of these NGOs amidst all these problems is rather deafening? Look, uh, the various NGOs and some of the individuals that have supposedly styled themselves as uh, the people who are going to save us all, it just shows that uh, they are hypocrites. Mm. And that's really w what it is. It's lamentable. But now, going, looking forward, if we are to say, well, wait, where do we go from here? Mm. We must, as South Africans, come to the realization and acceptance that the current state of affairs in our economic matters is not acceptable and that we must accept that urgent decisive action needs to, be, to taken be taken to stop it. So we must be asking a question. The mainstream media, this is what they should be doing. They should be now asking questions to say, is it possible that we can have a country that will continue to grow and avoid arrested development which we have suffered from for the last many years under the current economic system and ideology that is being proven to fail? Or should we be saying, can this country be sustainable on a two trillion rand sovereign debt whereby we don't know who the holders of that debt are, there's no disclosure, and the holders of that debt are earning 150 billion rand plus in interest a year, is this a situation that is sustainable? Because we are paying higher than usual interest on that two trillion rand debt. Is this something, the media should be asking that question. Secondly, that in this country, can we, as some of the media has been saying, that we expect income tax to increase. We live in a country whereby more than two thirds of our tax revenue comes from the general public out there, the citizens. Is this a situation and is taxing these people more? We need a media that should be highlighting this question mm. that can we live in a country whereby only 18 to 24 percent, it varies, of the tax income of this country 
comes from the corporation, all the businesses in this country, because they have never had it so good. Mm. And can we sit in a country whereby we are expecting the private sector to invest when they are sitting with a cash, bar, cash mm. pile of over 800 billion rand that they are not investing in the real economy? Mm. These are the questions that the media should have been asking, because if they were asking that questions, the whole nation would then accept and realize that mm. there is a time for change, do, do there is a time for decisive mm. action, and it is now. Due to time constraints, we really have to cut this um, at this moment, but just to get your solutions-based conclusion on this, two seconds. Look, essentially we need, we need to ensure that, that the white uh, banks pay back at least 100% annual turnover. There must be criminal prosecution. We need to allow blank, black banks to thrive. We need a media tribunal that, that that can actually assess how white media operates and what interests they, they, they serve. Mm. And then finally, we need to understand that essentially the reason why people get shot and are just, their livelihoods are destroyed mm -hmm. amongst our people on the ground is essentially because white interests and white media portrays us as mm. unable to solve our problems as black people. Well, gentlemen, I will really have to cut cut our conversation very forward, but very thank you so much for joining us in studio. Well, to you, thank you, Mr. Mani, Mr. Khadima, and Mr. Mastop. Thank you so much for joining us in studio. And to also thank our online Skype guest, um, thank you so much to Mr. William Bird for joining us, and also political economist, Mr. Mielani Mkabela, for joining us on the phone line. Well, moving over to more